Help support our coverage using Blueberry, the community that gives creators the ability to make money, get detailed audience measurements, and host their audio and video. Get 30 days to try out the service using promo code BLUEBERRY004. That's B-L-U-B-R-R-Y-004. All right, we got our next guest is Tom Granger, Senior Director of Strategy and Business Development from Neuron Magnetics. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks so much. Great to be here. Yeah. So what are you guys doing here at CES? Uh, Neuron Magnetics has developed the first new magnetic material in half a century, and we're introducing it to the world. First new magnetic material. Oh, you have to explain more. You got my curiosity peaked here. I got you. I mean, something almost no one thinks about, but... Magnets are part of, an integral part of, most of the technology that we use every day. So I'd say easily 80% of what's on display here at CES. Pretty much anywhere where electricity creates motion or motion creates electricity. So generators, motors, the thing that makes your toothbrush buzz if you've got an electric model. Yep. And even down to the speakers that folks are hearing us out of now. That is a magnet, a yep. coil of copper wire attached to a membrane. That's right. And so today, the magnets that folks are using are made of materials that are pretty critical and uh, relatively scarce. That's right. It's a rare earth material. Rare earth material. You got it. Exactly. Yep. And so, I mean, just what the name implies, when you look at the future of what we're going to need for electric motors and electric vehicles, in wind turbines, and just in everything being built here, taking off as a wild success, there are not enough magnets and not enough mines for those rare earth materials to satisfy the need. And even if you recycle, they're hard to recycle, expensive to recycle. So tell me what you guys have invented here then. So what we've got is a magnet where it's made out of iron and nitrogen. And the sources of those are iron oxide, so effectively rust, yep. which we'd all be familiar with, and ammonia, so what you're making fertilizer out of. So you can now take processes that you have anywhere in industrialized society and say, if we need to make a magnet, we can. So tell me about that process then. Is it come out, look like a physical magnet, or what's, what's the process? It, what's going to come out at the end is what you or I would recognize as a magnet. It's black, it's shiny, it's metallic, and it sticks to other metals. The process itself is taking the pretty highly engineered rust. We can control elements of the size and the distribution, flowing through the reactive gases, and you get yourself what is the world's most magnetic material known. So it's iron nitride, a very specific phase. And then it's our work, and there's some, there's some secret sauce, in taking that powder and pressing it, lining it up to get you a magnet that makes the absolute most out of what is a pretty big breakthrough material. So I am sure there are a load of patents that go along with this. Yeah. And what I guess the basic question is, what has been the response when people see it, have they played with it, uh, what's the, you know, because the first thing we're going to do is stick them together, right? Make sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've got it perfect. The first thing folks do is you stick it to something. And the response has been overwhelmingly positive. Anyone who is in this space has been looking for a solution to their supply chain problems, looking for something new that just unlocks an innovation waiting to happen. And new materials tend to do that. When you've been waiting 40 years, there are a lot of innovations waiting to be unlocked. So people will stick it, feel it, see that it's real, and then the engineer in them comes awake. So their brain wakes up and they go, Papa! It sets off a few light bulbs. So I'm... S so I have no idea today how magnets are naturally manufactured. I have no clue on any of that. So where does the cost you guys cheaper, more expensive? What, you know, where does it come in when it, if you know, someone has a pile of magnets on a table from you know, how they've been resourcing them forever to what you guys are creating? Is it going to be more, less, same, about the same? As we're going to market this year, we're figuring out the exact sort of positioning. But what I can say is we're making it out of commodity raw materials that you can source anywhere. And so any impact of scarcity or volatility or given those rare earths, they only come from a few specific places in the world. So you get into a trade issue, and immediately the right. price goes up 10x, and that's happened. That's not hyperbole. Are you guys a public company yet? We are not yet a public company. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate you asking. <laughs> because I want a piece of this. <laughs> wow. So um, 
is it started off as a startup or what's talking about the company a little bit? 100%. So Nyron was a spin out of the University of Minnesota, which um, if you've been to the Twin Cities areas, you've got 3M, you've got Seagate, a bunch of material science companies with a long history of magnetic memory, like the hard drives in our computers. So the right set of ingredients for something to come out of it, it was the U.S. government in uh, 2010 watched what I told you about that 10x price spike right. and said, oh my goodness, maybe we need something that is going to be domestically producible to oh. ensure our you know, national security transit systems a have a solution. A lot of that going on right now and across a whole bunch of rare earth materials. Absolutely. Yeah. And so at that time, a grant program came out. A professor at the university was awarded that grant, and the baseline technology for Nyron came to be out of that sort of private-public collaboration. It was a slow burn, as material science is, but over the last two to three years, um, I guess two to three years ago, I should say, some of the core risk was retired. Some of that performance that was theoretically possible and for a long time projected started to become real and measured. And there were suddenly magnets you could pick up, stick to things, build into devices. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Now, let's do that for lithium and a few other things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the homework for everyone listening. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's for the scientists out there to, you know, put your heads together and, you know, maybe uh, rub two pieces of uh, plastic together and get something else. But, you know, I think the amazing part about this is, is that it's probably just... It went back to the science mm-hmm. and to really smart people that understand, you know, at a almost probably at a molecular level, you know, what it takes to create a component that would be if you have a magnetic characteristic. So this is pretty fascinating stuff. It really, really is. It's a, it's a bit of an exciting innovation story where yeah. there were handoffs between magnetic physicists to the metallurgists. And now we're at the stage where we've got a magnet we can hand off to the folks who are making your favorite audio systems, the folks who are making your new you know, Tesla Roadster. So it's that last handoff is happening, and I guess I should say second last. The last one will be the handoff to the people who get to use those. That's right. Yeah. Can't wait to see something that comes on the market with the Nyron Magnetics logo down in the bottom of it that's... Uh you know, powered by or whatever it is or has it. Your your clean earth magnet (laughs) powered products are coming very soon. Awesome. Hey, congratulations on this. Thank you for sharing. Where can people find more information? Uh, Nyronmagnetics.com is the place to go. And um, yeah, please, just contact us. Reach out if you've got a place where you want to use a clean earth magnet, the world's first powerful magnetic material that is totally free of rare earths. You guys wowed yet? I'm wowed. So, bonus. Congratulations to your team. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. The Tech Podcast Network CES 2024 coverage is executive produced by Michelle Mendez. Technical directors are Kurt Corliss and Adam Barker. Associate producers are Nancy Ertz, Clinton Millsap, Sergio Velasquez, and Terry Willingham. Voiceover by Aaron Hurst. Our hosts are Marlo Anderson, Don Bain, Todd Cochran, Scott Ertz, and Christopher Jordan. Studio and equipment are provided by Plug Hits Productions. This has been a Tech Podcast Network broadcast, copyright 2024.